Merci grand Dieu. Pour te kembin. Merci pour fidélité au Seigneur. Oui, Seigneur, la semaine dans tes présents sont dans la vie nous encore. Nous bon louange, nous bon gloire pour ça, Seigneur. Et nous continuons bon louange chaque jour. Nous continuons bon gloire chaque jour pour mériter le Seigneur. Ou unique, Seigneur, pas qu'un autre qu'en vous, pas qu'un autre qui est comparé avec vous, Jésus. Pas qu'un autre qui est à qu'à mourir pour nous, ressusciter pour nous, pour libérer nous, pour ouvrir le port ciel là pour nous. Nous allons rentrer libre dans le trône de Dieu à cause de grâce, à cause de justice, au Seigneur, pour nous. Nous disons merci pour ça. Et avec toute force, nous, avec tout courage, nous allons lever les voix pour nous adorer, pour nous louer au nom de petit tout Jésus. Amen. La voix de tout le monde s'il vous plaît. Alléluia. Glory. We sing glory. 
because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Say, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Let's worship the Lord. Him, keep your eyes on him. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. I worship you, my Lord. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Lord, just because of who you are, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We bless your holy name, my Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. It's not because what you did, Lord. But we worship you because of who you are, Lord. You are everything, Lord God. You said you are the great I am. The great I am, Lord Jesus. The great I am, Father. And we want to thank you through Jesus. We recognize you as Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Makadesh, hallelujah, Jehovah Tisitkeno, hallelujah, Jehovah Nisi, hallelujah, Jehovah Rapha, hallelujah. Oh yes, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Father. We want to thank you, Father. We reveal yourself to your son, Jesus, hallelujah. And we want to bless your holy name, Lord. We want to bless your holy name. you need, he is there. He's your Jehovah Jireh. He provides for us, Lord God. Only one thing that he needs from us just to have faith. Have faith in him. Have faith. Hallelujah. No matter what happened, no matter what the sequences are, just have faith in the name of Jesus. He said, call upon his name and you shall be saved. Saved on everything. Amen. Just continue to have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because his promise is yes and amen. God needs you. Jesus needs you to confess the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. He is God. There is no one like him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the great God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. We might send in. We're going to welcome our pastor. Greetings and welcome to Christian Community Alliance Church, located at 272 East 19th Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11226. Our phone is 718-826-6111. Or you can visit our website at ccaoutreach.org. On our website, there are plenty of resources. We have articles in both English and French. We have books for purchase, also in French and English. And we also have videos, which includes our weekly sermons. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We invite you to join us either in person or online. On Sundays, we have prayer at 8 a.m followed by praise and worship at 9 a.m., and then our preaching, which is led by Pastor George DeFay. And during the week, we meet on Zoom, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. 
we invite you to join us. Thank you. For your spirit and your might. Thank you for your wisdom, your intelligence, your knowledge, and above all, thank you, Lord, for your power. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, you may be seated, praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning again, everybody. Happy to see you, gentlemen. Praise the Lord. Keep it up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We going to say a couple of things before we move into our study. Uh, we want to welcome everybody that's watching by video. You know, sometimes people do watch uh, months later and sometimes years later. But the word of God is for every day. Sometimes people think, well, this is a past thing. You know, this happened. Well, that's very nice. But when you start hearing it, and you realize, okay, this is for today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, number one, we got to say thank you to everybody that made a tremendous, quote-unquote, <clears throat> contribution to our, shall we say, Haiti funds. Now, so that you'll understand, okay? Number one, <clears throat> um, this is to help the people because everybody knows what the story is. Things are very tough, very difficult. Everything, food and so on and so forth, went up the ceiling. And it's uh, unfortunate what I'm going to say. <clears throat> when people move out of their base, of their home, and you are into somewhere else, it's a little bit more difficult. So, and uh, we were able to, quote unquote, by God's grace, help. So that you'll understand. <clears throat> so that you'll understand. Now, so far, <clears throat> it has been collected $3,600. So far, praise the Lord. Now, Pastor Mesa, we talked to him. He said the following. What he wanted to do, what the plan was, uh, he did do it for the people of the school. So <clears throat> every person that really work in the school they got something. So he's finished with this. And he's already started with the church. And guess what? He expects to finish very soon. Praise the Lord. Now, some people might say, well, suppose we have money left because I wanted to give. Well, money is always needed. And it's going to go for Haiti's mission. One of the things that I want you all to understand is this. <clears throat> we don't know how much damage we're going to have to repair. I don't know. So, money is always welcome. The other thing I want you to understand is this. If it is at all possible, what we could do, we could double up on the people. Did you get that? You could always go ahead and give some additional money. Now, the situation is what it is. You all know it by now. Uh, things are not doing too well, of course. And really, it's a, it's a bad, bad situation. But not above God. Okay, you understand? The situation is difficult. It is bad. But it is not... Nothing God cannot take care of, okay? Praise the Lord. Now, in the world today, we're having so much issues. Before it was Ukraine. Then it became Israel and Gaza and Hamas. Now, it's Israel 
and Iran. Yeah, last night again. Uh, see, what? Is that a movie? No, it's not. It's for real. Israel is uh, keep keeping up with things, but these are not the things that are pleasant. But the Bible tells us in the last days there will be war. That's one part. And rumors of war. That's another part. So both of them going to. We all will like to see peace, but you cannot have that without the Prince of Peace. Only Jesus could make this thing happen. In the meantime, everybody understand what I'm doing here. I want you to really get the spiritual life, understanding. I really want you to have that. Because everything considered, everybody's going to die one day. This world is going to have a lot of tribulation. Jesus told us that. And at the end, you have great tribulation. You know, I'm not saying this to discourage anybody. But I'm saying this to tell you. If you are not operating in the spiritual level, you're going to go under. Okay? I hope I make sense to you. So that's why we're going to be talking about a spiritual life. But hopefully today we'll get to see a lot of areas. And uh, by God's grace, we will develop some as the time permits and as the Holy Spirit lead us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, <clears throat> raise up your right hand and say, Lord God, in Jesus' name. You said in your word, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by your Holy Spirit. So I thank you and I bless you, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you will lead and you will guide me and you give me quick understanding in the name of Jesus. Everybody say it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me explain certain things. For you to understand spiritual life, you have to understand spiritual death. Everybody, let's say this word, spiritual death. One more time. The Bible talks a whole lot about this. In order for me to go from spiritual death to spiritual life, you're going to really have to understand what spiritual death is. You with me so far? Okay. Now, let me say a couple of things that we all know. We are all familiar with it, and I'm going to kind of use that as a base for us to move on, okay? Now, Jesus was talking to somebody, and the person said to him, I will follow you, but first, I have to bury my parents. That means to say, hey, I like to follow, I like to be with you, However, my parents' burial, I have to take care of it. Did you get that? You, you got that. Okay. Anybody knows what was Jesus answered? Let the dead bury the dead. On surface, this don't make any sense. It really does not. Because the more you can understand, the more you could say, how the dead going to bury the dead? Because that don't make any sense. If you're in a coffin, if you're in the tomb, and if you're dead, how can you go and bury, you know? Do I make sense to you? So Jesus was saying, let the dead spiritually, 
bury the dead physically. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. Okay, let's say it together. Let the dead, Let the dead. <clears throat> spiritually bury the dead physically. Did you get that? I want you to understand that. Because a lot of people, quote unquote, they talk about salvation, they talked about this and that and the other, but the basic understanding is not. I want you to get it first, okay? You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, everybody say, if you are dead, say it again. Say it one more time. If you are dead to somebody, that means you don't have a relationship with that person. You got it? Okay. Let's say a couple of words, and I want you to really pick it up, because <clears throat> as we move ahead, I really want you to follow. Say it with me. S separation. One more time. Now, the word dead... <clears throat> Most of us, we could then you know, talk philosophically about this, intellectually about this, and so on and so forth. But what you got to understand, if something is dead, this thing doesn't have, quote unquote, life in it, or guess what? It doesn't produce and doesn't do much. Do I make sense to you? Okay. Now, if your battery is dead, your car one start. You got it? You okay with me so far? Okay, everybody say dead battery. Mm -hmm. No energy. No power. No life. You got it? Praise the Lord. Now, if your electricity is dead or cut off, you're in darkness. You with me so far? You, you okay? Uh, let's make sure we, we get it together, okay? Okay. Now, the word <coughs> life, there are different type of life. Say it with me, different types of life. Say it one more time. Now, <coughs> most of us don't understand. If your leg does not, do not work. Got it? The nerves are not working well. Guess what? You are an invalid. You get it? So when they check out your legs, it, mm -mm, that's pretty dead. You with me so far? So you cannot what? Function. You with me so far? Okay. Now, when we come to spiritual death, you have to understand the following. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. And he lives in a physical body. Say spirit, soul, body. Now, man is composed of these three parts. Got it? You okay? So far so good? Okay, praise the Lord. Now, <coughs> Let me try to deal with this word with you. Say relationship. Say one more time. Now, in order for you to have a relationship to someone, in order to have communion to someone, you have to relate and connect in many areas. We okay? Y you could. Okay. Now, obviously, people could go into perversion, but actually, most people understand. <coughs> you cannot have a relationship with something or someone that is not like you. You okay? Y you, you get it, okay? Now, everybody say many type of relationship. You have parents, you have kids, you get it? Now, relationship 
you have students with other students. You have two students with teachers. You, you, you got it, everybody? Okay. Then you have, quote, unquote, church people, so-called, with pastors and evangelists and so on, ministers. You have different type of relationship. Everybody say it together. Different type. Say it again. Of relationship. Say it one more time. Different type of relationship. Now, listen to this. Jesus told us that God is a spirit. And those that worship God should worship him, what? In spirit and in truth. At the time Jesus was saying that, he was saying these are the ones that God really desire to worship him. However, the time is coming. So when Jesus was saying that, it was not yet time. If you understood, say amen. amen. Now, come the story. David worshipped God, and we could check Solomon, we could check a whole lot of other people. But I want you to understand, their spirit were dead. Did you get that? But they worshipped God in the soul. And they worship God in the physical body. But they were not worshiping God in their spirit. Did you get that? So when Adam disobeyed, guess what happened? When God came down, as he used to, Adam and Eve hid themselves. What happened? What's going on? They were ashamed. You got it? They were not comfortable. Turn around by somebody say, they die spiritually. In other words, the relationship couldn't work. Now, I'm going to go into these other words, okay? Say divorce. divorce. Say separation. Mm-hmm. Say breaking of relationship. Now, you all understand that when people are no longer friends when they were before. Did you get that? Guess what happened? And you could hear somebody say, so, so, and so. For me, that person is dead. The person is not really dead. But the person is really dead. Because what happened is this. Everybody say it. Say guilt. Say repressal. Say retaliation. Say unforgiveness. Is what goes into the person's heart. Did you get that? So when people are divorcing... Okay, let me hear you say it the way I say it. When people are, go ahead. Okay, somebody made it, but you did not. You're actually killing. And you don't know that. This is why not until your spouse is dead, you cannot marry another one. I say this to people. You might not like it, but that wouldn't be the first time you don't like something. If you cannot kill your spouse, you cannot divorce them. Let me repeat. If you cannot, you cannot. Now, that's a problem. People say, I don't get it. Okay, you got to get it. You have to understand it. You see, what happened is this. Everybody said, <laughs> let no man put asunder what God put together. Get it? 
God put himself together with men. What did men do? That's right. So what happened with the relationship? If you start understanding, say, I I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Make sure that the person next to you see it, okay? Now, this is why I said to people, do not get married to anybody unless God told you to. Let me tell you why. You ready? You sure? If you're ready, say, yeah, yeah. I'm not hearing you. Okay, now, let me tell you what happened, okay? As far as God is concerned, particularly if you're a Christian, husband love your wife even as what? Jesus loved the church. And wives submit to your husband even as the church is submitted to Christ. You get it? This is not humanly possible. I'm not hearing you. Repeat. See, this is not humanly possible possible. You see, we're afraid of the truth, but, you know, if the truth shall set you free, you might as well understand that. Say amen. amen. Now, it's important for you to see this, okay? Relationship, when it is really with God, it is worship. Are you don't give? Okay. You heard about singers, a lot of this, you know, romanticos. I don't know if you know about, quote, unquote, the uh, French people and uh, the uh, Spanish-speaking people. They like that, amen? Oh, yeah, a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that. That is to say, worshiping other people. But everybody said to the person next to you, your relationship with God includes worshiping, not with men. Did you get that? You sure? So if you're going to worship God, you have to worship him in spirit because he is a spirit. Do I make sense to you? I hope you, you, you got it together. You sure? Now, everybody say to the person next to you, this is what Jesus is about. Repeat, this is what Jesus is about. A lot of people never really understood it. Everybody say God and man, relationship, was broken. Jesus put them back together. It is called reconciliation. You got it? So what's going on is this. When people break relationship, yeah, that's usually what happened. They become enemies. I'm not hearing you. Everybody say reconciliation? Oh, say one more time. Is divine. But reconciliation is based on two major things. Number one, say forgiveness. Oh, let me hear you. You could try, you could try. Say it's based on forgiveness. That's right. But it is also based upon repentance. Say repentance. You got it, everybody? Now, one of these days, I'm going to explain this more. And hopefully, we'll get to where we want to be. Do you have a relationship with God? Uh, well, I, I don't know what you mean exactly. Everybody say to the person next to you, the only relationship, say it, God can have with men. That includes women, okay? Thank you. Is that of a father and a son? Everybody say father, father. and a son. You see, a lot of people don't understand that part. But we're going to start there for you to see. Because I think 
somewhere along the line, we really miss the whole thing. And it's not, I'm not going to fight anybody, but I'm going to show you a couple of things today that will help you. Okay? You with me so far? You get it? You should. Okay. Everybody say this word, worship. Okay. Now, let's check this out. We are in the Gospel of Luke. And as we move into Luke's gospel, <coughs> remember the song that they were singing earlier? Anybody? What the song was saying? Yeah. But, you know, there goes the other song. Everybody say, Lord, I worship you. Because. Now, everybody say to the person next to you, that's what Adam missed. And if you read your Bible, you got to read it the right way, praise the Lord. You're going to see what sin, disobedience, caused. But I want you to understand this thing in a different level today, okay? You with me so far? Okay. We are in Luke, and that chapter is going to help us. I believe we are in chapter 2. Luke, and we are in chapter 2. Now, in Luke chapter 2, <coughs> Luke is introducing us to Jesus, and of course, he's telling us where Jesus is from. And he goes to the what they call ancestors of Jesus. Okay? You with me? Now, <coughs> as we move into Jesus' ministry, you're going to understand a couple of stories. Okay? Hmm. That's a story that is really powerful. Now, you all remember Jesus was talking to his mom particularly and said, don't you know I am about my father's business? And he was not talking about Joe. He was talking about what? The father. It's important for you to understand that. And you're going to see why is that important, okay? And it came to pass, we are in chapter 3. Now, uh, the, the story about the father, it's in chapter 2, but uh, talking about his father's business, he was 12 years old. And at the time of 30, things have changed. Anybody get it? Okay, let's go. Now... Jesus was about 30 years old. You're going to go to verse 23. Verse 23. Okay, now I'm going to go a little bit fast. Okay, you with me? And Jesus himself began to be about age, being as was supposed. The son of Joseph, you know, Joseph was the adoptive father, which was the son of Heli, and we move on, which was the son of Matad, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of... Okay, now, every one you could check, this is what he's doing. From here to there. You got it? From here to there. Now, as he move ahead, and I want you to drop it uh, in verse 30, let's say 35. Okay. That would be a good where, a good place. Now, son of Saruk, which was the son of Ragau, which was the son of Falak, which was the son of Eber. Everybody say Eber. Uh -huh. Which was the son of Salah. Keep up with me. Now, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of 
of Aksad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of Noah. Oh, no. You said that something. Which was the son of Lamech. Keep up with me. And then, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of... Okay, now, you know where he's going, okay? Luke is bringing us back to Adam. You got it? Okay, which was the son of Malaliela, which was the son of Canaan? Keep up with me, keep up with me. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, and which was the son of Adam? Okay. Which was the son of God? Look at me, look at me. I want you to understand. Who was Adam? The son of God. You see, what happened to us is that we did not understand how God works things out. Now, if God is his spirit, and God created him, created Adam in his image and his likeness, Adam is also a spirit. You got it, everybody? You with me so far? You okay? Okay. Now, <coughs> I want you to pick it up, okay? Now, everybody say, Adam was the son of God. You got it? So Adam has a relationship with God. Adam could worship God. Once you sleep, that is to say, fall, you cannot worship God. Why is that? Because it's been a divorce between you and him. And say to the person next to you, it is a spiritual divorce. You got it? And all the descendants of Adam have sinned. So all the descendants of Adam are going to be born with what? A dead spirit. Everybody got it now? You understand? Now, a lot of people, it's unfortunate, but it happens all the time, they think they are children of God. And you heard that, you know. People that have no understanding about biblical truth, <coughs> they will say, everybody is a son of God. And I remember those days, particularly if you're Haitian, me, uh, me, and particularly if you're watching what they call the carnival, and you see a lot of folks, I mean, on the street, and then people will say, God, Christian vivant. They are not Christian, and they are not alive. These are all dead people. I'm not hearing you. But you see, they're jumping around, but spiritually dead. You get it? All right. So, everybody said, Adam was the son of God. He messed it up with Eve, and everybody went, Phew. This is what happened. You're all familiar with it, but I'm going to keep on repeating it. Your Bible said, <coughs> the day that Adam sinned, he died. God told him, the day you disobey, you eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, you will die. But Adam lived 930 years. He didn't die right away. So he was alive in his soul, in his physical body, but not in his spirit. If you understood, say hallelujah. Make sure you understand that part, okay? Now, what was Jesus about? You got it? Jesus was not of, quote, unquote, Adam as a natural father. Jesus was born of a woman. And sin, that's rebellion of the heart, was transferred from what? From the man to the woman. So, the daughter, sinful. The brother, or sinful. But guess what? 
but women do not transmit the sin of rebellion. Did you get that? That's how come God said to the king, I'm going to give you a sign. The virgin shall be with child. You got it? So Jesus was not born with sin. And he never committed a sin. So that you'll understand, let's go to Romans chapter 5. I want you to really get this thing together. Because many people, they think they could have spiritual life, but they cannot because they don't have the right condition. Everybody get it? Now, I'm going to go into verse 12. Let's read together. Wherefore, everybody together? By one man, sin enter into the world. You know who that is, right? Adam. And death, everybody say death, by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Did you get that? You, you got that? You understood? You understand? Now, please, understanding this thing going to help us. Say, Noah had sinned. Got it? <sighs> Moses, same thing. You ready? Because we're going to get into some heavy stuff here. Are you ready? If you're ready, say amen. Praise the Lord. Now, because this is what happened. Everybody say, everyone until Jesus is a sinful person. Why? Simple. Read. By one man sin entered into the and death by and so death passed upon all men. Why? Because for all have sinned. Did you get that? Okay. Everybody say your gun father. Say, say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come on, come on. You know, don't be afraid. You got to speak it. Speak it out. That would help you. Your grandfather might be a nice guy, but he was not born without sin. Okay. John the Baptist told us what the deal is. Everybody say, when John saw Jesus, and he says the following, this is the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. Did you get that? So, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you are spiritually dead. But you could be a Baptist. You could be a Pentecostist. Got it? Yeah, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? And you could also be an Adventist. You could be Hindu. You could be a voodoo priest. As a matter of fact, you could be a Catholic priest. But you are spiritually dead. Did you get that? Now, I want you to please understand this thing because most people, when they don't have the right base, guess what happened? They end up here and they're confused, diffused, and abuse. I want you to understand this, okay? You with me? Okay, say to the person next to you, worshiping God is only for those that are born again of the Spirit. Now, as we move into this area, we are <coughs> dealing with where we start with spiritual life. You have to be born of the Spirit. Some people think it's a Protestant thing. It's not a Protestant thing. Some people think when you have your first communion. Others think when you get plunged in the baptizing. Others think when you eat something like, uh, you know. Others think it's a matter of not doing this or doing that. And a whole lot of hogwash. This is true. Everybody say, the only way to be born again is by the Spirit of God 
and it is by the word of God. And this is why Jesus said you must be born again. Flesh come from flesh. But guess what? Spirit come from spirit. So you see what happened is this. I heard people say the Delhi Lama or the Pope for that matter or whatever is very spiritual. Okay, what do you mean by that? Very spiritual? What do you mean by that? You see, because you are dabbing in the spiritual realm, that doesn't mean you're born again. You got it, everybody? A lot of people never really understood. Pharaoh's magician were able to do stuff. They knew how to deal with, quote unquote, what they call the spiritual realm by using witchcraft. You got it? So listen to this and be careful with it because when we're going to switch, you're going to understand something. Okay? You got it? Now, everybody say spiritual life. One more time. Say it one more time. And say the other word, eternal life. Now, most people never understood what Jesus was about. Are you all ready? If you're ready, say yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to say a couple of things here. Again, I always preface that by saying, I'm going to say a couple of things. I'm going to say a couple of things. You know how many people say, hey, Pastor, say it. No, we want to cure you in. Okay? You with me? Okay. Ready? Most miracles in your Bible are not done. Yeah, that's the wave. It's really seeking for it right this <laughs> Yeah. Most miracles are not done in your Bible by Jesus. Anybody knows what Moses did? A whole lot of miracles. Correct? Mm -hmm. Anybody knows what Elijah did? A whole lot of miracles. Are you all with me so far? Don't lose me now. Praise the Lord. Listen, they were not born again. The fact that you can do miracles, that don't mean you are a child of God. Did you get that? Some people think I'm part of the church. Very nice. But when you get to understand what the church is, you'll be surprised. And you're going to find out what you really are part of. Now, what's going on is this. And ready? Are you sure you're ready? Are you sure you're ready? Okay. Now, everybody say, Jesus came not to do miracles. People say, oh, pastor, you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is here to bring the good news. What the good news? Spiritual life is possible. You got it? Say spiritual life. You're going to see that in your Bible. Folks, spiritual life is not by the Baptists, by the Adventists. It's not by keeping the Ten Commandments or the 613. It is not by you being cute. You with me? I heard people say, are you spiritual? Yes. If you're spiritual, you do this, you do that. Mm, 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 mm. No. Everybody say to the person next to you, understand me. The new birth puts you into spiritual life. Now, you're going to learn how to live that life. Everybody say, how to live it. How to carry yourself. You okay? So far, so good. And how to develop yourself. You got it now? Okay. Look at me because I'm going to jump into some heavy stuff and some people are going to say, this pastor is preaching hate. I know. Because you hate the truth. But the truth has set you free. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So let's get into understanding Jesus. Everybody say, understanding Jesus. Now, we are in John chapter 17, 
and then we're reading these verses. This is Jesus praying to God before <clears throat> he goes into his passion, that is to say, his suffering and his death. I'd like you to see how Jesus prayed. Let's go at it. You got it? We are in John, the gospel, and we are dealing with verse, with chapter 17, John, chapter 17. <clears throat> there are good reasons for us to see these things, okay? Everybody get it? These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eye to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Look at me. I want you to understand this. What Jesus was about. Miracle? Okay. What Jesus was about. Teaching about spiritual things? Yeah. What Jesus was about. Jesus was about. And I could go on and on. And you're going to have 29,000 things that Jesus was about. But the main thing was this. Everybody said to the person next to you, if Jesus does not die, Jesus would not have paid the price for reconciliation to God. It's important for us to remember these things, you know. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give, everybody say give, eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, everybody said eternal life. Say spiritual life. Now, say eternal life. Say spiritual life. Now, you're going to understand now. Let's go. And this is life eternal. What is it? That they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Now, everybody said eternal life is knowledge of God as the only true God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ that God sent. The reason why it's so important for you to pick it up, everybody say pick it up. If you do not hear the gospel, you don't have spiritual life possible. Because the spiritual life is knowing Jesus as the one God sent. So knowing him as Lord and Savior. You get it? It's also knowing God, if I say knowing God, as the only true God. Okay. Now, I want you to understand that everybody, quote, unquote, and their brother, have a God or many gods. Okay. If you are, quote, unquote, some moron, that is to say, if you are from any place, you're going to know some gods. Some people say, well, I don't worship anybody. I don't blah, 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 blah. No, I, I'm not believing in God. I, don't, I know. You see, by saying that, you're saying something. What are you saying? You are God. So, you worship your own but the problem with this, and sometimes you got to ask the people, where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to ask you what street, but before you were in Brooklyn, where were you born? I was born in the hospital and so on and so forth. Okay. How did you come into the earth? Well, my father and my mother got together, and here I am. Okay. Very interesting. How come 
your father and mother get together more than once and then your mom didn't get pregnant just because your father and her got together. Because if you're going to have sex, everybody say sex, uh -huh. as married couple, all in the bona fide part of things, yeah, you might go at it, you know, what a thousand times, I don't know, because it's only 365 days a year, so hmm, if you have some years as a wife and as a husband, guess what? You should have a whole lot of kids. You know it doesn't happen this way. I'm not hearing you. You see, this is a little bit complicated what I'm going to say, okay? Some people try to make it all physical. Other people try to make it all supernatural. All this and all that. God used the physical, but the truth of the matter is that everybody understanding this is going to help you. Guess what? You didn't come by accident. You are the product of poor creation. In other words, God gave Adam and Eve the power to multiply. You all remember that? And guess what happened? Now, this is giving to every human being, everything being equal. You got it? So if God wants you to come into the world as a Haitian, so did you. If he wanted you to come as a woman, so would you. If he wanted you to come as 10 feet tall, so would you. Okay, everybody got it? So he does the thing. Now, my Bible make it clear. I don't have the time to go to scripture, but it is written. Everybody say, you form me in the womb. Everybody got it? Yeah, that's David that explained that. So, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Nobody gets to be born physically without God. And nobody can <laughs> come to die physically without God. I hope I make sense to you. How long are you going to live? Okay, that depends on him. There are things for you to do, but we'll get to that some other day. However, this is what I want you to see. Every one of you. Nobody created himself or herself. God is the creator. If you have life, he was the one that made it. You got it? You okay? Now, Jesus came. Everybody say Jesus came. For us to have life and to have it more abundantly. Now, everybody understanding what I'm going to bring to you. Because I think if you really pick it up, it will help you with the rest of our studies. Everybody said spiritual life opens the door for eternal life. Let me go at it this way. Everybody said reconciliation. Say it again. That's what Jesus is about. To reconcile men to God. You know what happened? The church, and of course we are guilty of that. <clears throat> we put the accent on our physical world being. Now, you remember what I said, physical? I didn't say well, I said well. See, we making it a world thing. God wants it to be a spiritual thing. And he wants it to be an eternal thing. Do I make sense to you? Okay. Uh, maybe we could try it this way, okay? <clears throat> no, you, you have to help the brother a little bit. Praise the Lord. Now, everybody here, if you are here, and uh, you are not going to die ever uh, physically, I want you to stand. So you are going to die. Really? Now, I went to bed last night. I said, well, I hope this Iranian thing don't go wacko. 
and start bombarding and booking because I really want to sleep. Okay, some people don't make the connection. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Because you never know what's going to happen. At the subway, some Iranian, whatever. You see what happened? You see the danger? Anybody knows what I'm saying? It's really tremendously, I tell you what, it is really scary what's going on in this world. Are you all with me so far? You okay? So, everybody said to the person next to you, you and I, from our spiritual inheritance and our relationship with God, can have life more abundantly. You could avoid to die a stupid death. You could avoid to die mm, with suffering and all. There is a lot of things possible. Everybody say, in God, in Christ, there is healing. There is restoration of the body. There is, you see, all these things come from Jesus Christ. But everybody say, we have to start being born again. Is everybody okay with me? Everybody? You good? You positive? All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you just a couple of things more, and then we're going to get into the story next time. Everybody said, if you are born again, say it. That's spiritual. If you are baptized in the body of Christ, that is spiritual. If you are filled of the Holy Spirit, that is spiritual. God wants us to serve him spiritually. God wants us to be sanctified and to be consecrated. Everybody say spiritual. God wants us to worship him. Say it again. Spiritual. God wants us to be willing to do his will. Spiritual. God wants us to walk in wisdom. Spiritual. God wants us to exercise the Holy Spirit gifts. Spiritual. God wants us to... You see what I'm trying to say? Okay. You ready? because I'm going to show you something that most people ignore. Everybody said, God starts it. God finishes it. Your part now is to develop in what God has started. And let me say this to you. You see all these things that I just mentioned? You know, that's the problem. Most of us when we're looking at spiritual things, we have the wrong idea. Most people think it's the devil. You're, you're speaking in tongues, that's the devil. You're falling under the power, that's the devil. Healing and miracle, hmm, that's the devil. Because Jesus said, see, people come up with stuff. You know what the devil doesn't want? It's for you to understand spiritual things. He doesn't want you to walk in the spirit. He really doesn't want that. But I want you to understand that last verse. But this is connecting with what Jesus said. We are in Galatians. We are in chapter 6. And I want you to see verse 7. Galatians. We are in chapter 6. And I want you to see verse 7. Go right ahead. Everybody read together. Be not deceived. In other words, don't be deceived, okay? Be mm, not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Everybody read together. For he that sow to his flesh, Shall all this flesh reap corruption? Everybody say corruption? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he that sow to the spirit 
shall of the Spirit rip life everlasting. I want you to understand something, okay? There is a part that God doesn't do. That's your part. Let me say this to you. You're born again. You don't understand a whole lot, but you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You repent. You acknowledge according to the word of God. You are a sinner. And then, boom, you're born again. And the Bible make it clear. We are not born by the flesh, not by the power of man, but we are born by what? <coughs> by the will of God. So we become children of God. Everybody say children of God. However, I want you to know at the end of the day, your resurrection will take place. How? How? By the Spirit. So even at the end, like it was at the beginning, it's God doing. You don't get yourself born again. He does. You do your part. At the end of the day, guess what? Jesus is coming back. And if, guess what? You're still alive, you change. If you were dead, you rose from the dead. Now, question. Ready? Say, in the meantime, what do we do? Say it, say it. Say, in the meantime, what do you do? From the time you're born again to the time you're going to get caught up or die, what do you do? Read. You sow to the Spirit because you shall reap everlasting life. What I want you to see today is this. It is our duty to really learn about spiritual life. Some people confuse spiritual life with church commitments. Some people confuse spiritual life with going to heaven. No, no. Everybody say to the person next to you, right here, right now, we can rip from the Holy Spirit eternal life. Everybody, I want you to understand what it is. It's not life on the earth that will pass away. It is life from the Spirit. You see, this is why if you had cancer, you can be healed. I'm not hearing you. If you are broke, guess what? God can supply your need. You see, if you feel distraught or down and so on and so forth, say, you have a comforter. That's the Holy Spirit. You see, what happened is this. Jesus said, listen, you're going to be not, you see the way I say it, alone. I will be with you. You see, what happened to us is this. We have to learn to walk by the Spirit. But you see, most people don't. They come to church. They're looking for God to give them something. I'm not saying it's wrong, but there is a lot of misunderstanding here. Everybody say, God wants you. Come on. To live, even like Jesus did. You see, if I knew what I know now, I would be a different person. But maybe if I knew what I know now, maybe I would not have learned what I've learned. You see what happened? So we go to our life, make sure we learn. Your experience is going to help you and going to help somebody else. From darkness to light, from defeat to victory. Do I make sense to you? From death to life. Why? Because as a child of God, you have a lot 
of benefits in Jesus Christ. And it's not just for earth. It's also for heaven. Every one of you. Every one of you. Please. Don't think it's a church thing. Church doesn't give eternal life. The word of God and the spirit of God. Get it? Pastors don't get you to heaven. You have to be born of the spirit. I'm saying this because a lot of people, they believe the wrong thing. Everybody say believing. Say it again. In the church is not your salvation. Say believing in Christ Jesus is your salvation. Now, every one of you, I got great news for you. You're going to live forever. Everybody say forever. When you say that, oh, come on, pastor. Everybody dies sometimes. Yeah. Because you never know who you really are. You are a spirit. If you have been born again of the spirit, you're going to live for eternity. And you see, what I want you to understand is this. Every one of you, please don't leave just for now. Okay. Believe it or not, I could testify to this. Don't live just for today. Everybody say, look towards eternity. If you are doing something today, ask yourself, is it for God? Is it for me? Does it glorify God? Because Jesus Christ came so that you might have life life more abundantly, but the life abundant is serving God. Let's stand. Everybody say, standing in the promises of God, developing in the spirit. Strength and power is not in the flesh. The flesh could let you go. Many people, young, kind of tough, what I'm going to say, but they ain't going to pay. 12 years old, 10 years old. Mm. Folks, let me say this to you. Only God can really make you live a life in abundance, and in peace, in power, only him. Everyone, raise up your hand unto him and talk to him about you. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, make me. Make me, Lord God, an instrument for your praise, for your glory, so that my life can be pleasant unto you. Every one of you, be reconciled with God. If you are watching by video today, make that prayer. If you are Christian, church people, so-called, make that prayer with your heart. And everyone here, just repeat after me. Say, Lord God of heaven, I come to you by faith, acknowledging that you are the only creator. Acknowledging, Lord God, that you sent Jesus, your son, for my sin to be forgiven. I accept his sacrifice fully and completely. And Lord, I want to grow spiritually. I want to develop my relationship to you. I want to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. I want to be able to leave this planet Earth when the time comes with full assurance 
even as the Apostle Paul, knowing that the crown of glory has been reserved for me. Lord, we really want to live for your pleasure, for your praise. In the name of Jesus, God of heaven, you know my situation, you know my condition. Give me, Lord, your wisdom to overcome every attack of Satan. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all the people said, if you understood something different today, clap unto the Lord, give him the praise. Amen. You understood something different today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody seek ye first the kingdom, and all things shall be added to you. Okay? Praise the Lord. But to get into the kingdom, you got to be born again. I'm going to say this to you. Please, if you plan to give, Make sure get your faith behind your giving. Okay? You don't tip God. You don't impress God. God has given you the opportunity. Guess what? Everything you have is actually his. Because you know you're going to leave that planet. There is no you all going your place. Praise the Lord. So everything you have, it's all his. Okay? Now, if you have your own block ready, raise it up high and say, Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to give in the name of Jesus. You are my provider and in you I have everything I need. So I thank you for my faith to work. And as I bless you, I thank you for reaping what I sow in Jesus' name. Go right ahead and give. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Remember, if you're giving for the Haiti cause, uh, make sure you check with Sister Nicole so that she could really know <coughs> what the deal is, okay? Make sure you check with Sister Nicole. And if you're giving to Haiti, make sure you write on it, you know, for praise the Lord. By the way, I have to let you know, uh, there have been a lot of coal going on. Everybody got it? You understand? Uh, use your faith, okay? Now, this is, this, is, this is where you walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Amen? Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for each and every one here. We thank you for what they heard. And I thank you, Lord God, for developing in them the desire to walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for everyone that makes their commitment to follow and to please and to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hug somebody and say, see you next Sunday. But in the meantime, make sure, everybody say, make sure, Say, make sure you meet us on the Zoom, okay? Make sure you do. Make sure you do. <laughs>